Hello everyone. I'm so happy to see such a positive response about the last video on acne scars that I had posted on my YouTube channel. There were a lot of comments and questions about hair fall in the previous videos we shot. So I thought I will take up this very important and common problem of hair fall or hair loss. But do tell me, how did you like my last video? Any comments, suggestions or questions are always welcome. Before I go ahead, please do not forget to press the bell icon and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which goes by my name, Dr. Divya Sharma. Now hair, hair is a continuously regenerating, regrowing organ. Often we realize it until we have a problem with it. Just like how we human beings have a childhood, a youth, a old age and death. And some of us do believe in rebirth. Similar is the growth cycle of hair. Now hair has a growth phase which we popularly known as anagen. Now anagen or growth phase decides the length and thickness of our hair. After this initial phase of growth, hair stays on the head. The phase is known as catagen and then it prepares for its departure. The departure phase or the phase in which the hair stays in the follicle, dead, is known as telogen. The telogen hair are then shed and as the telogen hair is shed, there is sprouting of a new hair underneath in the same follicle. Where is this entire process happening? It is very important for all of us to know and understand this growth cycle in order to understand the causes and treatment. Before I go ahead, friends, do not forget to press the bell icon and subscribe for we are continuously putting more and more latest evidence-based information on skin and hair on my YouTube channel. Coming back to the point, this entire, you know, growth cycle of the hair rests in dermal papilla. Dermal papilla is like that bud from which a hair sprouts. Dermal papilla has lot of stem cells which actively regenerate, replicate, divide and cause the formation of a new hair. So most of the emphasis of the treatment is on this bud known as dermal papilla. The function of it is to continuously regenerate, replicate and regrow the hair cycle. It is impacted by a lot of factors, the details of which I'll be talking in detail. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to watch more. Now, let us first talk about the symptoms. What are the common complaints when it comes to hair? Most of the patients come with doctor, I'm losing a lot of hair. I see a lot of hair on my pillow and when I take a bath or when I comb my hair. There are a subset of patients who say that doctor, I don't see hair fall, but I feel they are thinning. A subset of patients also arrive sometimes in a very panicky mood. The doctor, yesterday evening when my mother was applying hair oil, she discovered a patch which doesn't have hair and I don't know when it came. There are patients who do come with itchy scalp, itchy scalp with red and scaling on it. There are patients who come, the doctor, there is no hair fall, there is no hair thinning, but the hair in the frontal area are receding slowly and steadily. These are the common complaints when it comes about hair. Let me just give you a little brief about how do we divide or classify the hair fall. Do not forget to press the bell icon below and subscribe to my channel. Coming to the broad classification of hair fall, I would divide it into hair loss and hair fall. One of the commonest reasons when people complain that doctor I have lot of hair everywhere on the floor, I have lot of hair on the pillow and when I comb, that condition is known as telogen effluvium. A couple of minutes ago, if you have watched and subscribed my YouTube channel, we talked about the hair growth cycle. Telogen effluvium means 
that most of the hair on a patient's scalp is in telogen phase rather than anagen phase. Did I forget to mention that on a normal patient who doesn't have any hair fall, 80 to 90 percent hair are in the growth phase or anagen phase and roughly 10 percent is in the telogen phase. But when this ratio gets altered, it is known as telogen effluvium or increased shedding of hair. There is something happening down there in the dermal papilla which is making the scalp shed more hair and which is discovered by the patient as clumps of hair. Telogen effluvium indicates that less hairs are in anagen phase and more hairs are in telogen phase. This is quite common in a patient who suffers from nutritional deficiency. Though we all are spending a lot of money on food, but somewhere down the line, there is a problem with nutrition in urban patients more than rural patients. Nutritional deficiency, uh, acute stress, which could be mental or it could be physical. Any illness like chicken pox, dengue, a surgery, a breakup or even a project deadline can lead to telogen effluvium. Certain drugs can also cause telogen effluvium. There could also be some correlation of your sleep, eat, wake cycle with telogen effluvium. The only fact that restores the peace of mind when a patient is having telogen effluvium is that hair would eventually grow back and the patient may not lose the hair. The very reason my patients would come running to me is, Doctor, are you sure I'm not going to lose my hair? Now, based on our diagnosis, if it is a telogen effluvium, chances are quite high that you may not lose your hair, but this is just an aberration in the hair cycle. Second, and a steadily rising complaint is of thinning of hair. Men coming with receding hairline, men complaining of a little more thinning than usual in the central part of their head, females complaining of a diffuse thinning on the crown area of the hair. We call this as actually hair loss and I will talk in detail why there is a risk of hair loss. Do not forget to give a gentle press to the bell icon here. And subscribe to my channel. Let's talk about male pattern baldness. As a child attains puberty, there comes the entry of testosterone. The same way testosterone gets converted into dihydrotestosterone. We talked a couple of minutes ago about dermal papilla. They have receptors for this male hormone. No wonder men have more hair on the beard and moustache area and all other parts of the body. But this dihydrotestosterone is very antagonistic to hair growth on the scalp. Dihydrotestosterone or DHT reduces the growth phase of the hair on the human scalp. As a result, as a teenager, you know, attains puberty, there is a slight recession of hairline that takes place. When due to increased levels of DHT or aberrant role of DHT, this process of miniaturization goes overboard, comes male pattern blindness. What do we mean by miniaturization? I had talked a couple of minutes ago that the anagen phase determines the length and thickness of the hair. So DHT reduces the size of the anagen, hence making the hair fall thinner and shorter. As DHT progressively decreases the growth phase, the hair fiber shortens and shortens further. And when that hair is intelligent phase and sheds, it is not replaced by a new hair. So friends, from this you can understand that this is actually a situation of hair loss. 
Now, depending on the severity, we grade male pattern baldness and very commonly we use a Hamilton Norwood classification where we would say a normal human male would have grade 1 or grade 2. But by grade 3, it's an ominous sign. It's time for you to consult your dermatologist and not waste time trying herbal, nutritional or other remedies. If you feel you have hair thinning beyond grade 3, it is time for you to consult your dermatologist and help them treat this condition better. Female pattern hair loss. There has been a rise in women who have been complaining of thinning of hair. It is more in a diffuse way rather than how it looks like in a male patient. The impact of female pattern hair loss is much more because hair for long has been considered an essential part of beauty. A beautiful woman cannot be defined without hair is what the popular conception is all about. Many a times I see a lot of female patients not only desperate but dejected. Rejection in female pattern hair loss is much more in the society than males. Though female pattern hair loss has become more common along with this rise in epidemic of polycystic ovarian disease and obesity. We all know that for long estrogen, the female hormone, was playing a very protective role in preventing the miniaturization process I talked about a couple of minutes ago. Any alteration in the estrogen and progesterone level causes this process to happen. For a long time, lot of us were emphasizing on hormones alone as the sole reason for female pattern hair loss. But a substantial subset of women with iron deficiency can also manifest similar clinical changes. It is very imperative for a lady's iron and protein to be normal and there are some doctors like me who do not like to call it female androgenetic alopecia because in my humble opinion androgens are not the only cause of women could lose hair. So we see a lot of women with no hormonal problems, absolutely healthy, fertile and beautiful but having this menace of female pattern hair loss. So it is very imperative that if you feel there is a thinning of hair, you do have a look at the status of PCOD as well. Polycystic ovarian syndrome where a woman's insulin level increases can decrease the very growth phase or antigen. Coming back to a very important another cause, traction alopecia, tight braiding, using lot of hair accessories can also induce a traction injury to the hair follicle, causing a hair loss in the frontal aspect. So too tight braiding and hair styling or repeated chemical treatments can also cause this form of hair loss. A number of patients who panically attend the OPD complaining of coin shaped patches of hair loss. That condition is known as alopecia areata. Your own body's defense mechanism, your immune cells, they attack the black color found in the hair follicle, causing a temporary patch of hair loss. Alopecia areata, no matter how distressing it would look to the patient and to the treating doctor, is not permanent. But definitely, it indicates a tendency of autoimmunity. It could be genetic or it could also be found more in people who have a family history of thyroid, arthritis and other autoimmune diseases 
like lupus. Alopecia areata could at times also be triggered by a sudden stressful situation, mental or physical. Alopecia areata also can be divided into various types depending on the site and severity. If found on the back side of the hairline, it is known as Uphysis pattern. If found in the front side of the hairline, it is known as a reverse Uphysis pattern. It could be universalis, it could be totalis and unfortunately sometimes it could even impact the eyelashes and eyebrows. And unfortunately, some patients may also have alopecia areata of eyelids and eyelashes. Autoimmune diseases, as we can very well understand, would require a little tempering of the aberrant immunity. Your doctor might like to use a topical or oral immunosuppressives. I would be talking about the treatments for all the above mentioned causes in my next series of videos. Please do not forget to press the bell icon and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Keep watching this space for more.